Hello and welcome back to To Restore You. It is Angela. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Before we get started and I share with you what we're going to be working on on part two of my top 10 tools and travel on the go projects. And before we do that, I wanted to give a, a little shout out to Hannah, Sonia, and Gisela. Thank you so much for your comments and for following us and for being a part of our community. We appreciate it. Um, I have to be honest, this is my second take at this. The first one was so good. Isn't that always how it is? And then I had a malfunction in my technology, so... Part two, so we're going to do this a little bit different. Um, first one, and we're just talking about textiles today. In the last video, which I'll link below, uh, we talked about um, <clears throat> paper projects and crafts and art projects you can take on the road. So today, we'll focus less on the tools and more on um, the projects that you can easily take along with you. So one of the things that... Um, I would suggest is um, throwing in, you know, a Ziploc or a baggie of um, scrap fabrics. And if you don't like to slow stitch to hand stitch, you do have an alternative. So I will tell you, these most of these fabric flips that I did uh, were all done on my sewing machine, with the exception of the one that I did. Where's that one? Um on the camera that you didn't see. I had a great time talking to myself. Um, and these I've all left blank inside. This is the one I did on camera and I just sewed all of the pieces together by hand. And then this one, I'm gonna show you how you can easily do this if you don't want to sew, but you wanna get make some progress on your stash, is just use your glue. And um, if you do, if you are someone who sews at a sewing, sewing machine, uh, this is a great way to get a head start. All you're doing is kind of designing and putting your stuff together. I think I might have already glued this piece down. I did. Okay. Um, this, I think, is an iron-on patch. So, um, you can simply just tack. Let's see. Let me make sure this is where I want this. I think I want it right there. I want to leave that a little bit. Okay. Um, just tack this down and, you know, tack your pieces together. I'll show you this on another project that we're going to do as well. Really lightly. You don't need much. And just enough to get it a little bit so it doesn't fall apart when you put it back together. Or, I mean, you know, put your pile together and your traveling. This I'm going to go ahead and glue down quite well because... I'm not going to be sewing around. Oh, got my finger, my thumb. Okay. Um, but this is a really quick project, something that doesn't take up a lot of space and doesn't require a lot of tools. So um, a great, easy, easy project. Now the next one I'm gonna show you, so that's number one. The next one I'm going to show you is Something that's probably not a uh, obvious one. <laughs> I spelled stitch wrong. Um, for junk journalers, but certainly for those of you who travel. Um, years ago, my mom and grandma, Mo, uh, did a lot of, oh, and I put it up, a lot of what's called punch needle. And that's what I've got right here. It is uh, very easy, uh, and you don't have to know how to embroider or anything. You don't have to do any stitching by hand, but you do need um, this little tool, which is just a wire threader and some kind of um, punch needle punch. This is an ultra punch. I um, am going to show you how to do this, but I also have a really good video. Um, I looked in advance because I am no pro. Uh, but I thought it might be helpful. On the last video, I showed you how to um, thread the needle, um, but I am not very good at it. It worked the first time, unbelievably. Um, 
but I already have it loaded for the next one. And because this causes me the most frustration, I'm not going to show you again, but I will tell you kind of how, what you do. Um, you basically put this all the way through the needle and pull it all the way out through here. You put your thread in between it and then you just pull it back through to thread the per first part. And then if you can see, let me see, I'll get up here. Do you see how that's, there you go. Do you see how that's thread then through the eye of the needle? You take this again and you put it through the eye of the needle coming towards you. You again, pull your thread through um, the middle of this like that. And then um, you pull it through and then it's thread just like that. That's as easy. I say that's as easy as it is, but <laughs> um, I left this piece. I don't know why. Why? I don't know why I did that. But if you can see on this, um, this is upside down. Uh, it doesn't look really that pretty on this side. But when you turn it over, this is the side that you're going to cut out. And then you can put this right on a journal cover, on a journal card. They're super, super cute. It's very easy. It's not, you don't need a lot of thought when you're doing these. Um, you can see the one thing, that's why I put the stitch in here, is because I hadn't done this for a long time. And so when I came back, I started um, filling in what was left and realized that the needle length on here was longer than what I had wanted it. So I have it on one, which is the very smallest. And so 10, 12 would be, you know, longer this way. So write that down. But all you do when you punch needle, and this is going to be hard for me because I have to do it standing up and close to the camera. So all you do basically is you punch straight up and down. Let's see, can you see that? And you just pull your first punch through. I almost forgot this. I've got glue all over it. This is really hard to do with my... Come on. There we go. Um, I usually just hold my finger on that first one. Hold on, this is... And, oh, the other thing, you see how I've just... I have not even... Um done anything with the end of my embroidery floss, it's because um, you need a lot, a lot more than you would think. And um, it needs to be kind of, you know, loose. You can't have, you know, a really tight piece of string and you don't want to run out in the middle of something. So I just leave it hooked up here and then get, just give it a little bit of slack. So once you get that the way I have it there, Hold it for the first time and you just pull straight up and you're just going like one needle length. This is really hard. The hardest part about this, sometimes I get, I start going a little too fast. Um, but the hardest part is just getting used to not pulling that needle all the way up. But you get the gist. That's all you're going to do. And then when you need to turn, you turn your whole piece. And this, the cloth that I'm using for this is called Weaver's Cloth. Um, it's kind of like muslin a little bit. Um... And that's how you do. So how cathartic is this? You just keep on going. So you get the gist. And then it just all fills in. And while it looks kind of ratty at the moment, so I got to trim that off, it will look really, really pretty. So I'm going to leave that like that for the moment and put this aside. So punch needle, number two project that you can do on the road to help adorn your or create your stash. Now, the next one we're going to do, this one, by the way, um, I scored literally thousands of these little squares. 
and they're all vintage fabrics. Um, and so snippet rolls or um, jelly rolls is what they're also called are a great thing to take on the road. So like I had this, I have this whole pack. I am getting ready to go on another trip. So along with this and a needle and thread, um, and I'll probably take my punch needle too so I can finish it. Um, that's really all you need. So um, a couple of things that I have done. Here's one that I did on camera last time. Now, sometimes when I'm like, this is just all one continuous one. This was done on a sewing machine, obviously. Um, but you could do these, you know, just keep adding, which I'm going to show you here. How to keep on, keep adding. This is the back. Okay. Um, and these are just, I just, I'm turning them into rectangles. And you only need a couple little stitches in each one. And that before you add, you know, maybe one or two stitches um, before you add your next piece. So I'm just going to do one. Let's see, we need something different here. Okay, here we go. And you just keep adding. And you can space these out as close or as far apart as you want. Hang on. It's not through there. There we go. Do do do. And you just keep adding and adding and adding until you're finished. Add one more. And on this one, you see there's several of the same, several of the same, but we're just going to go. Oh, here's another one. This is pretty. But easy project. Doesn't require a lot of skill. Even if you're a beginner, a novice at hand stitching, slow stitching, you too can do this. So there you have it. Project number three for our Art on the Go two-part series. Okay, so I'm going to leave that like that. I'm going to put all of this aside because I am going to take these with me. And I need my... Put them over here. One thing um, that you can do, too, like, like I did with this little snippet, is... Um, if you don't want to stitch, I hand stitched this one. But if you didn't want to, again, your glue and you're doing some fabric snippets while you're on the road. So I'm going to throw that into my snippet pile. By the way, um, when I'm done with this, the next thing I'm going to do is another craft room tour video because um, my three-tiered cart, I have all set up and I did a little rearranging and, and scored some stuff that I want to be able to show you guys. So I'm going to do that next. Okay. Here's another one. Um, you may have seen in some of my, actually one of these had, uh, these on there. Um, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I do use yo-yos quite a bit. And this is a yo-yo. Um, you probably maybe have seen those in, in a big quilt where they sew them all together you do two stitches, two stitches, and then sew the next one. And you do them in piece, in, in, I well, the way I learned, you do four, like a four square. And then you do another four square, and then you sew them together, blah, blah, blah. So, these are really fun to make, and they're really, really simple. And here's another one. Here's my farm journal. This is a big old journal. It needs to be... I need to do something with it. So this, there's three yo-yos here. There's one on the bottom, and I believe I put one on. And then there's a couple on the back. So these are great embellishments, and it's a good uh, project to do on the road to pass the time. So I'm going to show you how to do one. This is, let us let me tell you how big of a square this is. Did I not? Oh, yeah, I did. Or square. How about a circle? This is about four and a quarter inches across. So 
it's going to be mm, maybe a little smaller, maybe about two, two and a half inches round when you're done, maybe, maybe closer to two. So all you're doing, <clears throat> you start from the back and you just pull this through and you're going to go about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And I, for the sake of this, I'm going to do really large um, stitches because I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me hand stitch. And you keep it up. I'm not really doing this very well, but keep it kind of close to that fold. That will help when you are all done. I kept this end longer and I now wish I didn't because it's getting all tangly. Hang on, let me see, because this won't work if we don't... Something happened here. What in the world? Okay. I hope that that's going to work. There we go. Weird. Okay. We're back in business. Where was I? And you can, you can knock out a lot of these in a short amount of time. I am lucky enough that um, years and years and years ago, I was gifted an entire um, tote, not a huge tote, but like a shoebox size tote, full of already cut out circles and um, already completed yo-yos. So I'm sure it was somebody's project they were working on a, working on a, yo-yo quilt and they're all the vintage fabrics as well which makes my heart happy i love the flower the um feed sack oh patterns um i just think they're gorgeous they're my very very favorite my uh, mo is uh, she is literally an expert quilter um and she made, um, well, she made all of the stuff for the nursery. We didn't know what we were having with Landon. So she made um, the curtains, the crib bumpers, the run, or the dust ruffle, all of it. But she also made um, both the quilts, baby, or both the kids' baby quilts. And then um, she's made them quite a few quilts, but uh, she did one for Demi that was all in the pastel feed sack colors. Oh my goodness, I love it. So I, um, oops, I'm out of screw that up because I'm talking. I, um, one of the last times I was at her house, she had a bunch of fabric that was not, it was like, uh, reproduction fabric <clears throat> that she had used like in Demi's quilt and um, some other projects and you know the bright colors and the pastels and so I went through and got a bunch. I also um, I was organizing her quilt room. She doesn't she um, had a hip she broke her hip and had surgery and so she can't get down to her quilt. Quilting is easy. Well, she can't, she really shouldn't be doing the stairs at all, but, um, so she has, um, sometimes she has one of us bring her sewing machine up and, and a tote so she can work on quilts. Even that during, I don't know how many quilts we went through that she did went during COVID. Um, and she's 92, um, like six or seven quilts she had done just in that time. I'm like, wow, this woman is amazing. Um, but anyway, while I was cleaning and organizing it all for her, she had this huge bag, just like we as junk journalers have 
full of her scraps. And I'm like, oh, these are coming home with me. Like, they were garbage. I mean, for her, she wasn't going to use them. Um, to me, they were like gold. So I brought a bunch home. There was still a bunch more. I should have just taken the whole bag. But, oh well. Okay. Now, after you get it all done, you're just going to pull in the center. And I kind of keep my finger in here. I have to do this. I'm sorry if it's hard to see, but I have to do this up with the... How easy it is this, right? And then you just kind of use your fingers to straighten it out as you go. I really, I'm going to get rid of this. I can't handle it. Hold, please. Okay. All done. And remember, you're still, it, you still have this in your, I just, I, there was one spot that I might have messed up. And it might be right here. Nope. Okay, and you just pull it really tight and then with your fingers just kind of manipulate it until it lays flat. I'm going to I'm going to double check on what size this is too because this does not look like 2 inches. Maybe. And you just get the, you know, get that yo-yo that hole where you want it as tight or as smaller or as large as you want it. And then to finish that off, you just take kind of a couple little Me, a needle, and a video. Danger. Hopefully I don't poke myself. Say something inappropriate. You see how I'm doing that? And then I just go through and kind of give it another one. Go through here, loop it through to make my knot. Tie it off. And you have got your yo-yo. So there you have it. New ephemera for your junk journals. Okay, so moving on. Let's see. We've done one, two. This will be that. Yo-yos are three. Um, let's do this one. So this is the other one that I did while I, I was talking to myself um, in my last video that didn't work. Okay, so these are fabric flips that I did not make. These... Um, I got a whole huge tote full of fabric um, from a thrift store, and these were already done. So I am taking advantage of that and making my fabric clips. So you can see on here, I've used a couple of yo-yos, um, another one of those little iron-ons, and some lace, and made this cute little fabric flip. So I am going to show you how to make these flowers. So I've got a couple, all of which also done in the last video. So let's put that aside. There's little roses um, and then the little daisies. And then while I was doing this um, on the first video, I decided to try it with a regular piece of fabric and it does work and it looks super cute. So let me show you how to make them. We're going to make a couple. Um, the first one we're going to make is like this yellow one. So simply all you're going to do um, when I first made these, I made a huge, a big wreath, really cute wreath for my door. And I used all of these flowers on it. And I don't know where I saw it, probably Pinterest. And so they said to use hot glue to glue this together. Well, since then I've been doing junk journaling and I know what Fabri-Tac and Fabrifix are and they are heavenly and they're not as thick and it or it is not as thick, and it will um, make it much easier. What you want to do is just you're, you're making little slits in there. You just don't want to go past your glue. So I'm being pretty conservative. Let's see. And they don't have to be all even. I mean, <gasps> well, that's as big as that flower is going to be because I just cut it off. Whoops. <laughs> so remember when I said be sure not to get towards the glue the, yeah mm -hmm. or to cut it off that's okay we'll have two small flowers 
So let's see, how many is that? One, two, three. This is project number four. I think you're getting more than 10 between the two videos, but hey, why not? Okay, so here's how easy this is. Now I have to be, well, yeah, I did. I did one with the fabric, with the fabric fix and actually did it, but they were itty bitty. So all you're doing is just, I'm gonna do this this way. I think that'll be easier. You just kind of roll it a few times, tack it. some more. Actually, this, uh, my little faux pas might have been a good thing. Just kind of look at it, see what you think. Add a little more glue. I'm just going to add it to the end. And keep rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay. And now you have it. And I was trying to determine the best way to get these on your page because they can be a little bulky. Um, and they definitely were when I did them with the hot glue. So what I found is just smushing them. <laughs> it works the best. Um, let's see. We probably need a little flower or a little center in there. And you can just zhuzh them. Zhuzh them up however you want. You can add leaves, which I'm going to show you um, one more in a minute. So let's see. I'm not liking that because it's, oh, because it's not, it came unglued. Hmm. No wonder. Probably when I smushed it. There we go. I'm just going to hold that for a second. Um, I am getting ready for my Christmas journal. And I am working on, I have the 100 plus piece Christmas ephemera kits almost finished. Um, I just added a few, or well, a bunch more things. And so that just requires me cutting them all out, adding them to the kits and getting them on Etsy. And then I also have been working on the digital kits, which are probably my favorite. Oh, I just got glue on it. Dang it. I should have known that was going to happen. You got to kind of got to hold these, but there you go. You get the idea. I'm going to set this aside because I'm not going to stand here and hold it. Now, I will, I'm gonna try this. This is, this is a fabric sample. And this is actually drapery fabric. So I'm gonna see what happens with it. Cause I really like, I've like got a lot of this and I'm just gonna do a quick one here. Um, That glue, I hope that that didn't, I hope the glue that was just fuzz from the felt, because that's just felt that I used. I don't think I mentioned that. I had a whole stack of it. Um, but the other thing, um, I like to blanket stitch, which is kind of like, you know, straight line and then a vertical stitch, horizontal, vertical stitch. Um, just Google it. <laughs> um, but that looks really cute. Like if you use felt and layer it like for Christmas and make, um, like you can make Christmas trees or you can make a Santa cutout or whatever. And then just blanket stitch around another, you know, over an, like over a piece of fabric like this. And that would be super cute too. And that's an easy, easy thing. You can learn that on the road. Okay. So let's see. Just pull up good old YouTube. And search for it. Um, I am not an expert seamstress, but I've been around 
it all my life. <laughs> so I should be much better. My grandmother made all my all my dresses for prom. I would design them and then she would make them. Or we'd buy like we'd get close to what I had in my idea and we buy a pattern and then alter it. It was so much fun. But making clothes, mm-mm. I tried once to make Demi these cute little outfits when she when I still could dress her and they had the little flared pants, the ruffle, the bright colors, and the cute little tops that were in when she was gosh, this is getting really gooey. And I can't well, I'm gonna let go of it. And I tried to cut out the pants and it was let's just say there was no way that she would have been wearing those anywhere because they were not recognizable as a pair of pants. Cute. Okay, so that works. That's actually really cute. It's my finger stuck to it. Okay, let me wipe off my phalanges for a second. I'll put that aside too because I'm going to show you the second one. The second one you're going to need a circle. I think this is, well, it's the bottom of a vase that holds all my pens. So let's see how wide this one is. Five inches. So that's just, you can do any size. It doesn't matter. So what you're going to do, and I've already got this finished. You're going to cut around this in kind of a wanky way like this. So I'll show you. Look at that. Okay. So you just kind of start in and you just go like this. And just keep cutting it all the way around. Now, and it doesn't have to be perfect whatsoever, but you just keep going. Um, on this one, do you see how I left it a little bit at the bottom? Well, that here's how you do that. But what I did learn is this one does not, oh yeah, it does have it. One of them I did did not, because um, I'm like, let's just see what happens. So, it works. You don't have to leave the bottom. Okay, so leave a little bit like that. I think this will show up a little bit better, so we'll use this one. And then, again, all you're going to do, you're going to start really tight here. And I don't glue at first because it's just too messy. And you know what? I'm thinking... I think the last time I did it, I don't even know if I glued it all. Well, let's just try it without and see what happens. Let's just roll. You see how it's... I can't roll <laughs> and have you see it at the same time, but I'll stop periodically so you can get the gist. And I kind of go up a little bit just to give it a little more dimension and down. Oh, I pull it pretty tight. There's what it's looking like. And then get bigger. My thumb's in there. This one's a really, this one's really tight. I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling confident that I'm not, <laughs> this isn't going to fall apart. So I'm gluing just a smidge. I'm pretty sure I didn't do it the last one, though. Here, now I can do it like that. Isn't that cute, though? Again, it's probably something that's going to go need to go on the front of your journal. Um, because it is pretty thick. But, like I said, you can make wreaths with it, which I've done, and are super, super cute. Um... Okay, this is the bottom. So all you're doing is, I'm gonna glue that last chunk. I mean, as long as you can cut a circle and make some wonky cuts about, you too can make this. Okay, let's just glue this to the bottom. done. Super, super cute.
So I think I'll stick these in my stash and finish those up when I'm on the road too. So look at that. We have all kinds of cute little flowers that you can make. And let's see. Oh my goodness, we're doing great on time. What is wrong with me? Um, let's do one more project. So we've got some fabric flips done. And then I'm going to share with you um, a couple of things to look forward to. All right. So I told you I'm getting ready for Christmas and my Christmas journal. So I found this. And in that stack of already made fabric flips. So I thought, why not? I know it's not Why Not Wednesday, but why not just embellish one of these and see what happens. Um, if you are getting the physical ephemera kit, there is going to be some of this. There's red lace and green lace, which, by the way, um, I got this huge, looks like a quilt or sheets came in it, thing of lace um, the other day at my local thrift shop. And I just thought, okay, you guys might already know this, but whoever did this and used the um, paper towel rolls, smart. And I'm just going to leave them like that because it would take too much to undo them. But there's some of the laces that will be in that kit. And then some of this vintage um, ribbon as well is in there. So let's see. I have found a couple of these somewhere. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to, I'll probably, maybe I won't. We'll see. Um, I think that would be cute with a word on it. Oh, and that's what I was going to share with you that I, I like that. Okay. That I made these little holly berries. <laughs> They're so tiny. Look how tiny they are, but I thought those would look cute on here. So let's just stick those down. Here we go. Um, oh, let me, while you're looking, while I'm doing this, I'm going to show you these. Okay. So I'll tell you this story. So you know how sometimes people just come in your into your life and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so blessed that I know this person. Um, well, that is how I feel about Bob at Signet Stamps. And he and I have connected, um, thanks to Gail Augustinelli, a little shout out to her, uh, and she kind of introduced me to his... Um, some of his stamps on one of her projects. Oh, crud chunks. I thought that was hooked together. Nope. Well, and so I immediately went and bought some, fell in love with, with the stamps, and then just had some really nice conversations with Bob. And, um, and so if you've been watching the videos, you probably know that um, Bob was working on um, the round, the round stamps. And he asked me if he thought that that was something that I would be interested in. And I was like, oh uh, yeah. Um, well, unfortunately, just like a lot of things right now, um, I, I can feel Bob's pain from a construction standpoint because materials are just hard to get. This is so goobery. Um, and they're having some supply and demand issues. And they had, um, he had a sale going on. He had, you know, um, orders already placed. And um, had a lot that he just, he would, I mean, until he gets more of the materials, he can't fulfill all the orders. And he was feeling very, very bad. Um, and so I want you all to know two things. Number one these new round stamps I just did. Let me grab this. Um, I just printed all these or stamped all these. 
and then use some of my, I think that's, um, Cartabella, um, vintage Christmas pieces in here. And then those are some of the, um, the square and rectangle ones. And they work phenomenally. I love, love, love them. Um, so please, if you are watching and you ordered, um, just give Bob some grace and trust that he will fulfill your, your dreams and you will get these. Um, I had, you know, pre-ordered and he said, I had no idea that this was going to happen. And, um, so I feel really thankful and blessed that I did get mine before they ran out. But I tell you this because, um, as a small business owner, um, I can understand where Bob is coming from. And I'm sure um, all you can too. And um, he is just, there is, he is not only uh, a great business owner, he is, um, has a lot of integri integrity and superior customer service. So um, I promise when you get those stamps, you are not going to be disappointed. Okay, let's open this up. I like that. I think that needs something in the middle. My little reindeer probably isn't it, but let's see. What if we did? That might look that it goes this way. What if we did this on the inside? Let's see what it looks like when we close it up. Ooh, I likey. Okay. Decision made. Okay, I have got a fly hanging out here with me. You can go away. A fly. It's October, for goodness sakes. Ooh. I do not know what is wrong with this glue today. My thought was I was going to do a belly band, like put this on paper and do a belly band, but I don't think it's going to be appropriate for that, for this project. It just doesn't seem really flow. We'll see. I'm going to wait till that dries a little bit and then I'll cut off that piece. What do you think? Oh, this, see, this is too big too, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. That's not going to work, but let's just grab out that. Let's just grab out this paper and see what we can find in here. And let's just try to make something, a pocket. I'm in love with this paper. I haven't really used it yet. Okay, what do we have in the front? Except for a few stickers and the actual cover. All right, so. What is in this little bit of yumminess? Let's see. Oh, this is a night before Christmas, I think. That won't work. Ooh, that's pretty. Cute. Oh, that might. Eh, too bright. Oh, look at that. Super cute. We'll add that calendar. I actually am doing an advent project that I'm going to do a video on. I might be able to use some of those. I think this one might work. Well, heck, problemo solved. We'll just use one of these. <laughs> I have, this is, um, this looks like a lot of the stuff. I collect um, vintage Christmas stuff. I just got a vintage Christmas tree stand. It's not going to be actually used as a tree stand, but I think we're going to use this one. Um, but I liked the box, and it's just going to stay in its original packaging. And I also got a bunch of vintage... I should show you that. Oh, maybe I'll save that. I'll save that for my first uh, Christmas journal video. But um, a bunch of... I think we're going to go here. Uh -huh. I 
No, we're gonna go here and make it a pocket. Um, vintage uh, wrapping paper. And I was like, this can't be real. Um, like the great big ones. One of them came, um, one of them was like the four pack and it still was in its plastic. So that's gonna go on my display as well. Um, and then some of them were just individual. And so those I'm going to put in the kits. Um, so what a nice little surprise. What happened was, um, I went to get, I went to see Dave at the office in Omaha to get my teeth cleaned. And See? Oh, well, we're just wrong. We're not going to get to, we're not, I'm not overthinking it. <laughs> Actually, I kind of am, but, um, and so I was like, huh, let me take the long right way home. Because the shortcuts miss the view. That's what it says on my, um, water jug. See, look. So I thought, take, take that advice. And so I thrift shopped my way home and <laughs> there's a lot, there's actually downtown Omaha. There's some really fun ones. Um, cute. This deserves a spot on here. Um, so I, like I was done with my appointment, I think by nine 30 and I didn't get home till almost five. <laughs> I was having a good old time time by myself. Dave's just like, oh, whatever, whatever you want to do, Angela. I'm going to save the two and the five for something, for something, something. I just got those sitting there and then we'll stick my little, I don't think I should do that yet. So I'm going to sit him aside, but there you have it. We just made ourselves a nice little fabric flip. getting ready for Christmas. So when we come back and I get started on the Christmas journal, we'll have to find a home for that. Uh, so I will talk to you next time and uh, I'm going to clean up here really quick and then hop on to do another quick uh, craft tour video and give you some updates, which I think you will appreciate um, some solutions to a couple problems I had. So with that, I want to thank you all very, very kindly for joining me. And I want you to remember that uh, always take time to just be and we will see you next time. Cheers.